In today's video, we're going to perfect your Dardo. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. The Darado, or the Darado, I've heard both, I've heard Darado more often. If you know specifically what it is, comment below. But in any case, it's kind of a bear of an embellishment. It's like a super grip. It's got both a D graced note on low G and a C graced note. Yeah, that middle finger on low G to give you three C's before you get to the note. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document I have right here. So go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. But we're not going to dive straight into the Dardo. We are going to warm our fingers up with a fun little exercise here, hot crossed buns. I included this in a previous video on C grace notes, again, that middle finger grace note, but the one that has the most bearing on this, I thought was worth repeating right here in this exercise. We are going to primarily be changing and separating notes with the C grace note, though when we do get to the repeated notes in the third measure, we're gonna go back and forth between the D and C, just like we will eventually in the embellishment itself. I have the metronome here set at 70 beats per minute, but put it at a speed that works for you. And let's go ahead and try this hot cross buns with C and D grace notes. Feel free to do that as many times as you need to start getting that middle finger C grace note working for you because it's the key to this Dardo happening. Like all of my technique videos, we're gonna start with this embellishment, slow and broken down from all of the places it can kinda of come from, which in this case is B, C, D, and low G. Now don't get me wrong, it could come from other notes, I've just never seen it, so we're gonna to stick to just these four notes. And it always ends on a B. Again, does it have to? No, it just does. If you have an example of a Dardo going to something other than a B, please comment below, I'd love to know the tune. So in this first line, we're gonna break the Dardo across a beat. In fact, it's gonna take a beat and a half to get through the whole thing. We're gonna start on a full quarter note B, get to the first low G on the beat of the metronome, separate that with the D grace note. Then on the next click of the metronome, we're gonna get that C grace note to the third low G. And then on the upbeat of beat three, head back up to that B. We'll repeat that starting on a C, starting on a D. And then finally, for the one on low G, you can see we're actually tying that note across. We're gonna hold that low G all the way across so that the first low G of the Dardo becomes also the low G you are on, so it becomes a longer note, but then the same two grace notes taking up to a B. Metronomes again, set at 70. Let's give this a go. If 70 is too fast for you, please slow it down. It's not about the speed, it's about the accuracy. For line number two, we are going to do the same basic idea, but instead of pushing that dardo across the beat and making it a beat and a half, we're gonna make it a true triplet. Now, this symbol, the three underneath a bunch of beam notes like this in a Strauss Bay and other pipe music can sometimes mean two quick notes to a long note. In this case, I really mean three exactly even low Gs across one beat. This is called a tuplet, a triplet in particular, and this is a more classical way we would write it in other non-backbite music where you want the note evenly across three. Ba, 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 triplet, da, 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 da. So the rhythm here would be something like one, triplet, three. Let's give it a go. Again, repeat that until you can get it good, clean, and accurate, and on the beat. I remember way back before I was a piper on my saxophone, one of my instructors saying, if you aren't using a metronome, you're not practicing, you're just goofing around. 
And if you need help counting out rhythms and other timing, there's a link right here to a playlist of a bunch of counting exercises that can help you learn how to incorporate the metronome at better timing into your playing. Now, finally, full speed dardos. Now, these are quite tricky. Don't move on to this until you can do these first two lines good and clean. Now, I like to start the dardo on the beat. Bum, do 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 dum. But I have heard them kind of go across the beat. I don't think I've ever heard an entire dardo being before the beat, like say a grip. But in the context of at least the tunes I've come across, the dardo appears to fall on the beat for me. So we're going to hold that first B for the entire beat. And then the timing of that dardo is going to take itself away from the half note you're seeing at the end of the exercise here. All right, let's put this at 3-4 because it's on 3-4. Ready, go. Don't be in any hurry to get these down. This is a tricky embellishment. I'm not even saying mine are perfect. I'm in the process of perfecting my own dardos myself, but I've used this exercise with many of my more advanced students and they've gotten this embellishment to be super awesome. So I know it can work for you. I also wanted to include a few exercises here in a musical context. One of the most famous tunes that this occurs in is Susan McLeod by Donald McLeod, a fantastic Strauss Bay. And it's particularly tricky because the dardo is flanked by D throws. And they could be light or heavy, whichever D throw you want to play. If you want to know more about D throws, again, right up here is a playlist to my D throw videos. So check that out. But to do this first line in musical context, we're going to do a D throw to a quarter note D, then to a quarter note C. And then we're going to play the open dardo as a triplet, as we did in the exercise above, across B3 before heading to that B. We'll do that twice. In measures three and four, we are going to now hold that first D after the D throw for a beat and a half, going down then to a eighth note C, a half beat C, still a triplet across the beat, Dardo opened up to the B and doing that twice. So ready, go. <laughs> When you can do that accurately with the D and the C grace note following it and no other funny business in there, go ahead and try this bottom line, which is more or less at full speed, though a straw space typically played around 105 to 115, maybe even 120 for the more advanced players. We're going to, again, keep this at 70 for the purposes of this activity exercise sheet thing here. This line is the same as the line above it. It's just twice as fast. It is now eighth notes to a quarter note rather than quarter notes to an open triplet dardo. And then in bars three and four, we're going to have a dotted eighth to a sixteenth. This is really how it appears in the context of the tune, Susan McLeod. Ready, go. <laughs> There you go, everybody. A video on how to perfect your dardo, one of the harder, more tricky embellishments. That C grace note is not used for anything else in pipe music that I'm aware of other than this. I'd incorporate this hot cross buns warm up into your daily practice, like for a good long while, even if you don't have dardos in your playing, because when one shows up, that C grace note, that middle finger grace note on the bottom will be ready. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something on this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. If you wanted to go the extra mile, I also have a Patreon and a special shout out to Ms. Carrie Tresek and Mr. Michael Dingus, my number one supporters. You'll see names now of folks scrolling up. These are folks that support the channel monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to videos and other perks, so go check out my Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise like this prescription bagpipe shirt as well as my Command Your Bagpipe line of merchandise. So go check that out and let the world know that you have a prescription for your bagpipe addiction. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers.